Welcome to the bookstore. Today's book summary is on the book, Declutter Your Mind, by Barry Davenport and S.J. Scott. The book is divided into five parts and each part is having multiple chapters. Let's start with part one. Decluttering your thoughts. Thoughts form what we perceive to be reality and impact your mental well-being. However, having too many thoughts can clutter our mind. We're especially affected by our negative thoughts, because they tend to come back, right after. We slap them down. To manage our thoughts, detach from the negative ones, and declutter our mind. We need to work on our mindfulness. Focus deep breathing. When we feel overwhelmed or stressed, we tend to experience rapid breathing or shortness of breath. Slow, deep, rhythmic breathing can help us regain control of our mind. Try practicing 5 to 10 minutes of deep abdominal breathing every day. Meditation. Most meditation practices begin with sitting quietly, focusing on your breath, and ignoring any distractions that come your way. It increases productivity, promotes focus, decreases stress, boosts your overall brain power, and promotes divergent thinking. Get started with a 10-minute daily meditation practice. Meditation is a way of entering into the quiet that's already in your mind, buried under the 50,000 thoughts the average person thinks every day. Reframe all negative thoughts. The authors express this brilliantly. Critical thinking gives us the ability to solve problems quickly and effectively. Creative thinking allows us to develop original, diverse, and elaborate ideas and connections. But it's the uninvited negative thinking that clutters our minds and often drains our enthusiasm for life. To change this tendency and build the reframing habit, be the watcher, become aware of your thoughts. Separate yourself from your thoughts and just observe what is going on in your mind name that thought mentally acknowledge that thoughts are not your reality say i'm having the thought that i'll never get all of this done just say no visualize pushing negative thoughts into a deep hole or putting them into a balloon that floats away try the rubber band trick when stuck in negative thinking gently snap the rubber band on your wrist this physical action will interrupt the flow of negative thoughts. Know your triggers. Nearly every negative thought triggered by a person, situation, or physical state. Write down the triggers, so you're aware when they happen. Distract yourself. Break the cycle using distraction. Immerse yourself in a project that involves focus and brain power. Teach your old mind new tricks. Challenge the thought and replace it. Remind yourself of a positive event or previous win. Practice acceptance. I accept this struggle is happening. Take a deep breath and try to stop fighting mentally. Ask yourself, can I take any actions right now to improve the situation? Is there anything positive to learn from it? How can I get support as I'm enduring this? Take mindful action. Do something positive that requires focus and mental challenge to prevent yourself from falling back into overthinking or worry. Such activities include writing, painting or drawing, practicing an instrument, building something by hand, working on a complex problem. Set a worry timer. Set a timer for 10 to 15 minutes and allow yourself to stress over whatever enters your mind. Get it all out. Write down your thoughts in a journal to process your thoughts are. Find solutions. Part 2. Decluttering your life obligations. Instead of carefully evaluating what is best for us, many of us simply react to what life throws at us. A simple solution to assess the information overload in our life, defining our core values that endure through time, difficulties, and major changes. Here's a four-step strategy to define your values, or life might feel unbalanced and directionless, often leading to anxiety and depression. 1. Identify your core values. Go through this list of values and write down every word that feels important for your personal and professional life. Two columns. 
Pick the top five value from each columns and write them down on two separate sheets of paper. Finally, list under each value all of the ways it manifests in your current life, but also think about specific actions to fix the out of alignment values. Which actions are doable now or in the near future? Break them down into smaller, manageable steps. 2. Clarify your life priorities. Priorities show you how to spend your time, energy, and money. According to the authors, there are seven key life areas career, family, marriage, or love partnership, spiritual, personal growth, leisure, social, life management, home tasks, financial planning, budgeting, etc., health, fitness, excluding sleep, eating, and hygiene. We all have 100 waking hours per week. How many hours will you devote to each area, according to your values? Is your current life deviating from your ideal allocation? How could you rebalance this with specific actions? 3. Focus mindfully on quarterly SMART goals. Contentment with the present and planning of the future can coexist. The key is to enjoy every moment while creating your future mindfully and celebrating enjoy every step along the path. To achieve this, set quarterly SMART goals, instead of year-long ones that take you out of the present moment. SMART stands for specific, answering six questions. Who, what, where, when, which, why. Measurable. Measuring with precise times, amounts, or other units your progress toward the goal. Attainable. Stretching the limits of what you think is possible. Relevant. In harmony. With what you truly desire. Time bound. With specific deadlines for your goal. Here's how to turn SMART goals into action. Identify what's important to you. Focus on three to four areas of your life. Focus on three-month goals. Life is constantly shifting and lengthy goals are often demotivating. Use a weekly review to create a schedule. Create a daily action plan for your week, considering your obligations, priorities, and available time. Take action on your goals. Turn your goal into a project by starting from the target date and working your way backwards. Schedule time to work on goals by assessing how much time you have to spend on each goal. Turn goals into priority tasks by working on your priority goals first thing in the morning, or when you feel the most energetic, and schedule time for single actions by bundling them all together. Review your goals daily. Keep them at the forefront of your mind. Evaluate your quarterly goals. Ask yourself. Have I attained the desired outcome? What were the successful and unsuccessful strategies? Did I put 100% of my effort toward completing these goals? Part 3. Connect goals to Y-O-U-R-P-A-S-S-I-O-N-S. When you work on something you love, you feel energized in all areas of your life, attracting like-minded people with self-confidence and empowerment. To find your Passion. Follow the next steps. Write a vision of what you want in every area of your life. Investigate yourself with online personality assessments. Start reading about your interests or ideas for potential passions. Narrow your search to find training needed, successful people, salary figures, and time estimates for proficiency in these areas. Take a test drive through volunteering a part-time job, or shadowing someone for a few days, put money in a savings account. To make your transition smoother, deal with your current job by discussing with your employer. And stay motivated with daily action, focus towards your big goal. Part 4. Decluttering your relationships. Are close relationships, a romantic partner, friend, family member, or even Coworker contribute to long-term happiness in life. A high-quality relationship involves prioritizing the relationship, open communication, healthy conflict resolution, mutual trust and 
respect, shared interests, a level of emotional and or intellectual intimacy, acceptance and forgiveness, and finally physical touch, for personal relationships. Here are four ways to improve and maintain your relationships, which can have a direct, positive impact on your mindset. 1. Be more present. Being present and less emotionally reactive can help more quickly overcome stressful situations in a relationship. To achieve this, practice empathic listening. Step outside of your distracted mind and listen to their words in a non-judgmental way, making them feel safe, validated, and understood. Speak mindfully. Pay close attention to your words during a conversation and resist the temptation to simply react to someone's words or actions. Meditate. Loving kindness. Focus on developing feelings of warmth towards other human beings, who deserve compassion and love. Stop comparing to others. To stop such mental turmoil and emotional suffering, practice radical self-acceptance, change what you can, and express gratitude constantly. 2. Getting unstuck from the past. Many of your thoughts about the past relate to encounters with the current people in your life, so you often identify with them. To clean the clutter of negative thoughts about the past, resolve what you can. Share your feelings and pain, listen to their perspective, offer, ask for forgiveness, and discuss the future of the relationship. Challenge your story, challenge your own point of view. 3. Mindfulness with your partner. Mindfulness isn't about denying or burying your emotions, it's about taking control and acknowledging your feelings and experiences. It can strengthen your intimate connection with your partner, while reducing stress and angst in your life. To achieve this, make and communicate the commitment. Talk with your spouse about your plan to practice the mindfulness habit on a daily basis. Be emotionally present, remain emotionally open to pain, show empathy, and reflect. Back your partner's body language and words. Listen without defensiveness. Listen actively without preparing your response or defense, and be aware of your own reactive emotions, but don't act on them. Look for lessons within conflict. 4. Let go of certain people. Universal. Themes that reveal it's time to say goodbye. Verbal, emotional, or physical abuse. Consistent. Dishonesty, disloyalty, or toxicity. Divergent core values, questionable integrity, or incompatibility, ongoing immaturity, emotional manipulation, harmful irresponsibility, unresolved, or untreated mental health issues, addictions, drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling, pornography, refusal to communicate, address problems, or invest in the relationship to remove yourself from a draining or painful relationship. Consider the positives of life without this person. What if you didn't have to cope with the issues caused by the friction with this person? Consider the fallout of saying goodbye. They may try to sabotage you or wound you. How can you handle the fallout? You might need to talk about your plan with common friends, family, or a therapist. Define what goodbye really means. What type of communication, if at all, do you wish to have with them, and how often? What will you no longer tolerate from them? Communicate your intentions. Without blame, keep it short and focus on your own feelings rather than their faults. Accept that it can be a process, it is rarely easy or pain-free. Give yourself permission to do it. Slowly, if that's the best way for you. Allow yourself to grieve. Grief is confusing, if you View it as a normal part of the process of letting go, it will pass through you more quickly. Part 5. Decluttering your surroundings. Our surroundings contribute to the quality of our life. Often, we're cluttered with mindless tasks because we simply react to what's in front of us. 2. Declutter and free up mental space. Simplify your home. Set aside just 10 minutes a day, and within a 
few weeks your house will be in order. Let go of the past and release the physical objects that weigh you down. Simplify your digital life. Monitor your digital activities throughout the day. Where and how can you begin cutting back? Also take 10 minutes a day to declutter your email inbox. Icons on your desktop, and organize your files and documents. Simplify your activities. Busyness. Is contributing to your mental clutter, except that less really can be more. To declutter your. Schedule. Prioritize your daily priorities rather than trying to fit them all in. Purge the. Commitments you can drop without serious consequence. Alternatively, delegate, delay, or shorten. Them. Focus on three important daily goals, but with more intention, time, and focus. Build in. Sacred time to do absolutely nothing. Just be. Leave work on time. Try gradually cutting back your. Overworking habit. Starting with one day a week. Take a digital sabbatical. No access to any. Internet connected device. For one full day a week or a weekend. Harness the power of flow and. Focus by working on a challenge, or honing a skill. Set enough time aside and monitor your emotional state. Simplify your distractions. Distractions steal our time and motivation, trapping us in self-loathing and anxiety. To get more done, before bed or first thing in the morning. Determine your three most important tasks of the day, and ask why they are important. Break each task down into sub-tasks prioritize them, and estimate how much time they will take. Schedule. These prioritized subtasks into the most productive part of your day to maximize output. Make sure you have everything you need before you sit down for your work, coffee, water, snacks, and organize. Desk, etc. Work in a space without interruptions. Turn off your phone. Block unnecessary websites. Turn notifications off, and put a, do not disturb, sign on your door. Set a timer for 25 minutes and start working diligently. When the timer goes off, allow yourself a short break, but don't do anything that will steal your focus, calls, email, etc., from the tasks at hand. Between your three most important tasks of the day, get larger breaks, 15 to 25 minutes, to exercise, meditate, or have a non-stressful conversation. Mindless tasks, easy paperwork, organizing, etc., should be scheduled at your least productive times of day. Simplify your actions. To become present in, aware, even during the most mundane activities, follow the next steps mindfully, eat meals. Savor the experience of eating, with proper digestion and absorption of nutrients. Clean your house. Focus on the doing rather than the getting it done. Walk. Pay attention along the way. And let walking be the destination. Experience nature. Focus on your surroundings with all of your senses. Exercise. Pay attention to your body, posture, discomfort, and movements. So here. We come to the end of this book summary. Thank you for listening to the bookstore. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video. Later.